So first I want to say I am not a Muslim. I posted a Farrakhan video because it particularly addressed something that I wanted to address that I agree with at the moment. I think it's fair to say that we are human beings, you know, regardless of uh, our religious beliefs, we're still people at the end of the day. And a lot of us have common things that happen throughout cultures race and class and religion that are just common threats to humanity altogether i can't speak for all mankind you know i am i'm only me i am who i am just like god is i am that i am i'm only me but i can say that you know living as long as i've lived and having enough relationships with people you know various uh levels of relationships and associations and you know, associates and things of that nature. Um, and when I say associations, I don't mean mental associations. I mean, like, um, it's just things that are just kind of a common threat throughout humanity that are not really a black thing, a white thing, an Indian, a Chinese, and all the other uh, multitudes of races that we really have because it's really just not for races of people. Um, races are created every day, whether we realize it or not. Um... We're all human, and there are people um, in society that uh, have varying levels levels of of um, human existence. And I don't mean like, you know, it's just like they always want you to pick and choose between a couple different things. And choose some sort of side which continues this division. Like, well, either you're this or you're this. Well, though I'm not a Muslim, there are some morals that Muslims have and, and um, lifestyles that Muslims have that um, I could, you know, agree with. Although I don't necessarily practice that religion as a whole. Um, I feel like you should be able to learn from anyone I don't feel that you should just, we're Christians, we can only do Christianity and look at this Bible and our lives have to be about this. I mean, you still have a life that happens outside of um, Christianity, you know, I mean, yes, there's principles that you carry everywhere you go as a Christian person, how you interact with people, not interact with people, the friends you choose, the activities that you have in your life and your interests and everything. But, you know, there are going to be situations where it's not about your uh, spiritual beliefs and, and it's not about a spiritual principle. There are just situations that you're going to be in. You know, it's just like death. All of humanity experiences death. And, you know, what I mean by that is um, at some point in all of our lives, someone passes um someone we know someone related to like our grandparents you know if you live long enough your grandparents are going to pass it happens to like all of us um i have friends who still have living grandparents my grandparents um have been gone for nearly 20 years or more i lost my first grandparent at the age of 11 um, the rest of my grandparents, I don't think they passed until I was an adult, but you know, the, the, the thing is they passed. And at this age that I am now, none of my grandparents are still alive. Now, as far as my parents, my parents are both still alive and, and doing rather well, you know, they're still very agile and youthful. Um, neither of my parents look their age. Both of my parents are pretty physically active and getting around and, and walk for miles and miles in a day and, and getting around with their full uh with their full physical capability. Um you know, like if you see my mother walk or move, she moves like she's agile like a twenty year old because she's been physically fit all of her life and She's exercised and done yoga and all my whole life, okay? Same thing with my father, where my father's not probably as agile as my mother. My father still is, is still getting around 
pretty well for his age. And then you have me. Um, this is probably the most sedative of a life that I've ever had in my entire life was this past two years because with, um, you know, the shut-ins and they're saying, you know, stay home and stay in and when everything shut down and then leave you with a whole lot of, um, places to be active at. Cause I mean, although yes, you can exercise at home and I was doing that, um, the things that keep you up and about and going were sort of snatched. You know, like if you have some sort of regular regular scheduled um, duties like going to school, going to church, going to work, all that ceased for an entire two years, which did create a, a sedative situation for me. was not my typical situation I was used to living, but it was... Uh, you know, it was difficult because I had an active lifestyle prior to these past two years. So I was throwing a tantrum just before, you know, the shutdown. Like, I need to get out of the house. I got cabin fever. I can't sit up right here like this all day. I need to get out. I want to go here. I want to do this. You know, it's just like... I had just got to a, a place in my life where I had been in school for but five years straight. And then all of a sudden, I'm out. And then I got to sit in the house and can't, you know, go live my life. And that was frustrating, right, for a lot of us. So we sat in the house and people got busy with the kind of stuff that they really got interested in. And for some of you all, and it appears like, a vast majority of society got into comedy. Um, I've always loved comedy my entire life, ever since as far back as I can remember. And I still love it, and I always will. You know, like, um, it's just some stuff <laughs> that I may never do, but I might laugh at it, and that's all it is. It's, it's silly. I like fun. I like laughing because, you know, when... When nothing else fails, you know, when all is going wrong, um, my my old brother-in-law used to say, you got to laugh to keep from crying. And he said it's something to the nature that you laugh at the things that would, you know, you got to laugh to keep from crying. Like he said, he pokes fun of the things that normally will make him cry in order to pacify itself from crying and it was you know it was wisdom to me because he was a silly person and he always had you know crack jokes with his kids and you know sometimes <laughs> my sister was the butt of his jokes and I didn't necessarily appreciate that all the time but um I feel like you know if you can laugh at yourself you know I, I know there were things that I experienced in life that sometimes I didn't necessarily feel too good about, but it was just like a couple of people that would poke fun about those things. And I just had to laugh at myself. So it was something I was healed from and something that didn't torment me anymore because it was something I could have turned laugh at. Um, it was an endearing thing to me because this person might, <laughs> might have cured um, me feeling bad about myself because they were able to help me poke fun of the very thing that probably had haunted me the first early years of my childhood. But in my early adulthood, it made me just embrace and laugh and see that it just really wasn't that big of a deal. So not to make serious about comedy, but just, you know, I know there are some people that have no sense of humor whatsoever. I don't rather enjoy people that don't have a sense of humor. Um, I can appreciate, you know, I can appreciate people who are serious and intellectual and, and moving forward. But it's like I can also appreciate comedy more than I can appreciate that because um, it's just been a very huge part of my life. So... 
I think you all need to just lighten up. I mean, I understand that people make their jokes and the jokes may be distasteful or offensive. And there are times when jokes, you know, can be made inappropriately and people can choose to take a stance at offense or they can take a, a, a stance at just to laugh and, you know, you pick and choose your battles. You know, I don't think everything is just that serious.